We're going to be looking this morning to 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. He matters to God. John chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, Lord God. Father God, I pray that you would fill each person in this room this morning with your Holy Spirit, that they will have a personal encounter with you, Lord God. Father, I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit and everything that I say share it comes from you. I pray if there be one here this morning that does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, today would be that day of the new, their new birth in Christ Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your word. Speak to our hearts this morning. Reveal your truth to us. And may we apply it to our lives. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And as we look at this portion of scripture this morning, at no times in our life, we may believe that we really don't matter to God. The sufferings, difficulties, and hardships we face may seem like the Lord doesn't care. But this is not true. He does. You know, for this past over a year now, We've seen some really tough situations down with the COVID out there. I have never witnessed so much of so many people being ill and different situations as I've seen this past year. Even uh, lifting up a uh, good friend, uh, Brian Hartnoff from Saxton, lost his wife, Vicki, as most of us know her. Vicki Hartnoff, who passed away from the, this COVID. And at these sad times and these hard times, many times, we may not think that the Lord cares. But what we need to understand, everyone, is we live in a fallen world. You know, because of sin, we live in a fallen world and we're going to have sicknesses, we're going to have diseases, you know, and really as we look at it, it's really, you know, it's the love of God that he does care for us and that he will carry us through these hard times. Even Jesus himself said, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. And as we would even focus on scripture today, looking at many people from the faith, the believers that had great faith that suffered hardship throughout the Bible. One of the ones that we know best, who we think of as the Apostle Paul, of the hardship that, that Paul went through, the beating, <coughs> shipwreck, left for dead. But what does he say? He learned to be content in any or all, all situations. But Paul was in prison and went through some very difficult times. He had a thorn in the flesh. He was tormented by something. He tormented him and he asked the Lord to take it away, but the Lord said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. <clears throat> then we think of others in scriptures, of course, Many of us know, if we read the book of Job, the sufferings that Job had went through. Loss of his family, loss of his home, his flocks, and uh, everything that he had. He had sores all over his body. And even his friends turned against him. 
that we think of Joseph, who his brothers threw him in a pit, left him for dead, and he was sold into slavery, and he was put into prison for things he didn't even do. And then we look at Stephen, who was stoned to death. And even the Apostle John, who wrote this, who was exiled to Patmos, the island of Patmos. So, so many people we see in Scripture that suffered hard times. <clears throat> Our Lord has not promised us an easy life, but no matter what we're going through, we matter to Him. And He carries us through. The word, everyone, to matter means to be important to someone. That is how our Lord feels about his people. He knows each of us intimately. He knows our simple failures, our weakness, but still loves us and values us. Even in the pain and suffering he allows in our lives, he is still carrying us through. In 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He promises never to leave you, nor abandon you. But see, as I'm sharing this morning, as it even says in James, when you go through various trials, count it all joy. Why? Because it draws us closer in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And again, what we need to really understand, everyone, here on planet Earth is not our home. It's not our permanent home. It's a temporary dwelling place. And I know that many times that's hard for us to really understand that. We, we look at the planet here is permanent. You know, and it's God's love that he shed upon us that even the lifespan has been shortened. That's love. That's love so that one day we can be in the place that he originally planned for us to go to be. <coughs> but when sin entered the world, everything went chaos because of sin. So this is why we have sickness. This is why we have pain. This is why we have suffering. But what did Jesus say? That he will carry us through. In this world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. This is why it's so important to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And as we look at this, when the Apostle John <clears throat> wrote this epistle, John himself was about 80 or 90 years old. And this letter was addressed to believers and in the first three verses of chapter 3, he encourages them regarding God's love. Regarding God's love that was showed upon us upon our salvation. And if we look at salvation, I share this usually every week. Salvation begins with the understanding of our separation from God. See, because sin entered into the world, everyone, we are separated from God. And the way back to God is through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. And when we trust him to save us and to forgive us of our sins, we are reconciled back to God. We are reconciled back to God. Unless one knows Christ is his Lord and Savior, he is separated from God. It doesn't matter how much one says they know about God, or they attend worship service, or any other type of religious function, the main core is to know him as personal Lord and Savior. Amen. And upon that, you become reconciled back into God, and you become God's child. Praise God. That's the love of God that he loved us so much, What's it say in John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. 
He made a way back. That's his love for us. So he, we matter to him. We matter to him so much that he brought himself down in human form and lived for 33 years to go to a cross and die and was resurrected so that we can be with him for all eternity by accepting him as Lord and Savior. Once we are saved, we are truly changed and can never be the same person that we were before we knew Christ. I've shared that many times. You're a new person in Christ, and it's the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. It is no longer you that live, but it's Christ that's living through you. I'd like to take you to a portion of Scripture that many of us know. Uh, turn in your Bibles to Romans 6. Reading 5 to 11. We've been going through this on Tuesday nights in our Bible study. Those who don't come out need to come out. I'm telling you, you really learn. <clears throat> Says in Romans 6, 5 to 11. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Praise God. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ has been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him, for the death that he died, he died for sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise God. We have a new life with him, and we are dead to sin. We, have a, we are a new person in Jesus Christ. That's why the cross-reference to this is Galatians 2.20, which I share all the time. That Paul wrote that we Christ lives in us. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ that lives in us. And the life that we now live, we live by faith in the Son of God who died and gave himself for us. Praise God. It's his Holy Spirit that works in and through us. It's no longer us who live. It's Christ living in us. See, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the old nature dies. It's the new nature. But we still will battle that old nature. That's why we need to be in the Word. As I always share, the one you feed upon the most is the one you become more like. You need to feed upon the Word. You need to be drawing closer in that love relationship with Jesus Christ. And as God's children, we need to be sensitive to sin and have a desire to read his word and to live obediently godly, a godly lifestyle. And when we do commit sin, we get convicted of it, we can claim 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we confess it, we are cleansed. Don't let the enemy play havoc on you. Once you confess your sin and give it to the Lord, it's gone from the east to the west. But the enemy will always try to bring it back. And if we continue in sin, then the Lord disciplines us. Because he is our heavenly father. And that's love. A loving parent disciplines his children. And God is our heavenly father. And when we don't follow in obedience, we get disciplined. Which leads me to my next point. Although God allows trials in our lives for a variety of reasons, sometimes he uses them to turn us back to him in repentance. In other words, people, a wake-up call. 
It's a wake-up call, everyone. Many times, we're not walking with the Lord, we're walking in disobedience. <coughs> Say, well, what's walking in disobedience? It's not going to the Lord about things and decisions in your lives. It's deciding what you want to do on your own and how and when you want to do it. And see, our Lord wants to direct us and guide us. And see, so when we're disobedient, we'll be chastised or disciplined to it. And many times, trials and heartaches and pain can come through, not always, but sometimes it could come through our disobedience, not walking in the right direction with the Lord, doing our own thing, how we want to do it, and then suffering the consequences. And then after we fall, Lord, what happened? Well, first of all, did you go to the Lord about the decision or the situation that you were, that was on your mind or your heart? We should always seek the Lord's counsel before we do mostly of anything in this world. The evidence of God's care for us. Although we may feel we don't matter many times to anyone in this world, as God's children, we matter to him. John gives us evidence that shows he cares for us. As we look at 1 John 3, 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. First of all, as I've been talking about, in salvation. God reached down into our lives to his word and opened our minds and hearts. In other words, it's the, it's the love of God through the power of his Holy Spirit that enabled you to understand you were a sinner and that you needed him. And he drives us into his word as I have here Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. And it's revealed to us of our sin nature. So God reached down through the power of the Holy Spirit and convicted you of that. For you to even realize that you are a sinner and you need the Lord comes from Christ himself. Revealing that to you. Praise the Lord. That's love. That's his love. The Holy Spirit revealed in our hearts to come to Christ as Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit. You know, praise the Lord. Next, evidence that God cares for you is his sanctification. When you accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, you were set apart. That's called sanctified. The Lord set us apart for himself so we can live for him. His Holy Spirit was revealed in our lives to give us understanding of of his word so we can grow and we can walk and we can understand scripture and we can become more like Christ. This is what sanctification is. This is why you need to be learning and studying the word. You need to be studying it on your own. You need to have time privately with the Lord, reading his word, meditating upon it, in prayer with him, coming out to Bible studies. And again, I'll share this with you. Because you learn and study. <coughs> Ask the Lord to reveal himself who he wants you to disciple. You see? You know something? When you teach something, you're in it even more deeper. Because you want to know it well in order to be able to pass it on. Amen. That's right. As a congregation here, we are to learn the word and we are to disciple others. You could pray, Lord, who would you lead me to have a one-on-one -on -one Bible study with? I used to teach a little book called The Abundant Life, 12-week little Bible study to new Christians. 
And you're going to be with the bitterness of faith for a long time. You're going to do it so that they will know how to pass it on. And that's something that I think lacks in Christian growth today. It's discipleship. We need to be discipling others. One-on-one. -on -one. Having a one-on-one -on -one time with somebody. Going through scripture. Praying for them. Ask the Lord to reveal somebody to you. I guarantee you, he will. He needs to know the word. And as you begin to teach the word, you'll grow more. Because see, as you teach, you'll find yourself researching and studying and wanting to understand more. So it causes growth. And that growth causes more of the love relationship with you and Christ. We should all be, at some point, teachers of the word. And doers of the word. But this is sanctification. Growing in wisdom and knowledge. Setting apart. And as we're sanctified and growing, we pass our, our wisdom and our knowledge of insight on to others. This is how we're going to get the faith out there. We can't just keep it to ourselves. <clears throat> and as we study scripture, we'll walk worthy of the calling that he's called us to. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will become transforming our lives into his image as we grow more in our walk with him. That's where we get Romans 12. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. As you become, as you are sanctified, set apart, and you're learning and growing, you're becoming more transformed into the likeness of Jesus. That's the whole walk of the Christian faith. To become more like Christ. Next, he cares for us through his provision. He promises to provide for all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19. My God will supply all of my needs. As we trust him and depend on him, he gives us more than we could imagine. One of my favorite verses is Matthew 6, 33. So walk with him in his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6.33 Seek first his kingdom. Seek first him. Seek him. And you'll never be in want. Amen. And he's always right on time. Look at that word. Praise God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. <clears throat> More evidence he cares is, of course, his Holy Spirit. When we were saved, the Lord sent his Holy Spirit to indwell in us. Think about this, everyone, forever. God's Spirit lives inside of every believer forever. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, we would be powerless to live the Christian life. Think about that. That's where religion comes in. Religion. Working your way. Trying to do all the right things. That's religion. But true Christianity is a relationship with Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that power is in every believer. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot live the Christian life. The Holy Spirit enables us to become the person God created 
us to be. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can be created, who God created us to be, to work in and through us. Praise God. Evidence, now we are children of God. Out of 1 John 3, 2. We all understand that parents love us very much. Our human parents love us very much. But that does not compare to the love God has for us. You know, Scripture says, Jesus said, You who are sinners know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give to you? He loves you more than human parents even love the children. Praise God. He showers us with all spiritual blessings and promises that nothing can separate us from God. Turn in your Bibles, if you may, for a moment. Back to Romans 8, 35. 39. Powerful scripture here. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distresses or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. In other words, pain and suffering. Yet all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters here today, as we read the word of God, it's exciting. It's exhilarating. This should be our focus. Not the struggles and the worries of this temporary world out there. Be our focus. We shouldn't be beaten down Christians. You know, as Jesus says, in this world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer because he's overcoming. Even in the midst of trials and heartaches, we can be excited because think about this, everyone. We know our future. And it's with him in his kingdom. No more sickness. No more pain. No more back aches and leg aches. And headaches and diseases and cancers and COVID and this and that. None of that. A new life with him for all eternity. That should be our focus. This is why we need to be out there everyone spreading the good news of the gospel. First John 3 2 says, It has not been revealed what we shall be. As I'm sharing this morning. What we see now in our world and in our human condition is only temporary. If we look and focus on society, what happens, everyone? We become discouraged. Because it's worse now than it's ever been. And it's going to get worse. But be of good cheer because Christ says he's overcame it.
Many people do not know Christ today or understand about him. They ignore him and they reject him. People today are just so caught up in the busyness of riches and short-term pleasures of this world that draw them away from the Lord and distract us. And even as Christians, we can get caught up in this and be distracted from reading his word and spending time with him. And our main focus should be our relationship with our Lord. But there's so many distractions out there today that draw us away. So many people dying without Christ. We must be about our Father's business. Amen. <clears throat> Other evidence that we matter to him? We know when he appears, we will be like him. When Christ returns, we will be raised to be like him. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, but now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. God not only provides for us here, but we have a greater provision that awaits us in the future when we will be resurrected with glorious bodies in heaven. Praise God. But see, this is the type of things we need to be focusing on. And he promises us, those who know Christ, their names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's so important to know Jesus Christ. Life here is but a bit. Our lives matter to God because God desires the best for us. He desires us to live pure and holy lives through the power of his Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. Praise God. Amen. Knowing our future should motivate us to, to obey God's word and to want to share his word with others. As I finish this morning, do you feel that you don't matter to God? What evidence do you have? How has knowing you matter to God motivated you to live for him rather than living for self? And as I finish, remember, Living for self is emptiness, <clears throat> unsatisfying, and it's temporal. Living for self is emptiness, it's unsatisfying, and it's temporal. Living for God is fullness, satisfying, and it's eternal. Hear that? Living for God is fullness, satisfying, and it's eternal. Praise God. Amen. As I close, you may be hear this this morning. You say, but I still struggle. God is real. He knows your struggle. He knows your pain. He knows your heart. <coughs> and see, he'll never leave you because think about it. His spirit lives inside of you. He's with you 24 7. Praise God. As I share with every week, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Master? <coughs> <clears throat> Every week I share the gospel. I can't leave from standing up here without sharing Jesus. Because see, sitting in a pew doesn't save you. 
If you're here today and you are saved, sitting and listening is a byproduct of your salvation for learning and growing in your walk with God. But see, the most important thing is to know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. <coughs> That's salvation. To come to the understanding that we're all sinners. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. And we're only righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. And what that is, is just, for example, Lord Father God, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I realize that you died on the cross. You rose on the third day. Please come into my life. And may I live my life for you. That's salvation. And at that moment, the living God comes and lives inside of you. Praise God. Amen. And therefore, the Bible says you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today, Lord God. Father God, thank you for revealing that you do care. You love us so much that we cannot even comprehend. And I pray, Father God, if there be one here today who does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, today would be that day of their new birth. Realizing what Jesus did on that cross, accepting him as Lord and Savior, that he died and rose again. And he lives at the right hand of the Father. Sits at the right hand. I praise and I thank you, Lord, for your word today and the privilege to share your word. And I pray, Father God, that we as a body of believers would share your word, that we would be on fire for you, Lord, that we would disciple one in this dark and dying world for so many that are lost and need you. We praise and we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.